Today we'll take a look at the Fractal Celsius S24 and how well it gets along with the NZXT G12. Hello good people of the internet. Since my old Corsair AIO died, I had to find a replacement for it to silently cool my Gigabyte RTX 2070. I chose the Fractal Celsius S24 because it does a lot of things right in my eyes. First of all, it doesn't require any additional software to run. Secondly, it has 40 cm of tubing, which is longer than many of its competitors. The loop also comes without RGB lighting, but with a nice PWM fan hub between the fittings on the radiator. You may connect your fans there to let the automatic fan and pump control do its work, or you just plug them onto your mainboard and control them manually. That's what we'll be doing because we're lead Uber Tech pros of course. Just rotate the ring around the CPU block to change modes. We left it on auto because it will keep the pump running on its minimal speed of 1950 rpm most of the time. It's a standard AZTEC pump which will be noisy on lower rpm which has been tested many times. So in my opinion Fractal made the right decision to limit its minimal speed just below 2000. The included fans are Fractal standard X2 GP12 which are very silent if you keep them below 1000 rpm. So for just around 100 bucks you get a nice and plain looking AIO with many useful features and no bling bling. But since we love some bling, I threw in two Fantex Halos digital RGB fan frames. The 240mm radiator is more than enough for the 2070. Therefore you could still save some money by cooling it with a 120mm radiator you can already get for as cheap as 40 euros. Add in the G12 and you just only paid 70 bucks for a water cooled GPU. I link a video review of this lower end version in the description below. So let's prepare the AIO. First we install the fans along with our halos on top. Yes, I had to flip them later because they point into the wrong direction. That's what happens if you care more about the recording than about what you're actually doing. Don't forget to root your cables behind the screws for a cleaner look. You might be wondering now why the S24 isn't on NZXT's compatibility list for the G12 GPU cooling mounting kit. Well, that's because you need to do a slight modification to make it fit onto the clamps. We need to loosen the pump's housing as you can see here. Once we're done, we push the CPU bracket up towards the tubing, which lets us rotate and then remove it. Now we can mount it onto the G12 in the same way. Afterwards, we just push back the housing onto the pump and fix it in place and we're done. All we need to do now is to mount it onto our 2070. The included AMD bracket fits on most of these cards, so you don't need to modify the G12 itself. In case of the Gigabyte RTX 2070, you can even keep the original backplate. We scrapped off the original thermal paste from the cooler, that's why we apply some Noctua NTH1 thermal compound here. It's quite good for its comparably low price, so you might keep that in mind for your next build. We now place everything onto our card. Then we tighten the four screws and that's it. No rocket science here. Don't forget to connect the fan's cable to your GPU or to your mainboard later on. The radiator tightly fits just below my 420mm AIO. Its fans are mounted as an exhaust and there's some fresh air supply from below. Let's go straight to the results. For as little effort as this, we get the following temperatures. After saturating the loop with heat a couple of times, the GPU idles at 37 degrees in a closed case. Ambient temperature is 27 degrees. The fans are at 500 rpm, which is inaudible. The only thing you can hear is a slight rattle coming from the pump. Running superposition benchmark a few times gives a maximum temperature under full load of 57 degrees, with the fan spinning around 900 rpm, which is just barely audible. You can't hear the fans themselves, but a tiny bit of air moving. Star Citizen gives the same results as superposition. We get 57 degrees in a closed case. If we remove the S2's front panel, temperatures drop by 5 degrees to 52. Setting the fans to 100% drops the temperatures even more to 47 degrees, which is a surprisingly good result. The problem is you can now hear that your system is running from two streets away, so I'd rather suggest to keep the fans at 60% or lower. While playing games with lower demands like Smite or War Thunder, the GPU temps stay around 45 degrees with the fan spinning at 650 rpm. So that's it for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. I absolutely did making it. The results speak for themselves and the AIO it is well built and looks absolutely gorgeous with the added halos. Even if you go the cheaper route with a 120mm AIO, you should still be able to get decent temperatures at a low noise level. Share the video around to help me grow my channel. 
Thanks for watching and see you next time.